The Fog. Field of Spears. A single quest module for tabletop role-playing games. Written and designed by Impra. Artwork by Trisadella. A mysterious and ancient sickly green pyramid sits at the center of the crater atop the mountain Kar. The crater is eternally covered in a thick and impenetrable fog that seeps over the edges into the surrounding lowlands. Those that are caught in the fog never return and their bodies are never found. The people living near the phenomenon call it the Everfog, as it never seems to dissipate. The people are weary and keep away from the fog, crater and pyramid, saying that they are cursed or worse. This single quest module has the party enter the Everfog to try and find people that went missing. They will face what hides in the fog and the ancient power residing in the pyramid. It can be reasonably adapted and used in any tabletop role-playing game for a party of at least two players of any level. You are provided with the story, a small boss encounter and some adversaries compatible with D20-based systems. You might have to prepare additional foes or adjust given stats, rewards and battle maps as you require. Hooks and Entering the Fog Option 1. The Society of Ancient Artifacts The party comes upon a camp of tents with the flag of the Society of Ancient Artifacts, a spyglass on a field of blue, waving above it. The party is approached by their leader, Sir Jarquan or Delas, and requested for a sum equal to a good set of armor to go into the crater and find brother Uthric of Tail, who went to investigate the odd green pyramid at the crater center and has not returned for two days. Optional additional information. The society is following the path of destruction wrought by an ancient war to seek out artifacts left behind and reconstruct what happened. The pyramid and crater might be part of this story. The brother is an older man wearing glasses. Option 2. A wife and mother. A young woman, Eliand Creekweave, seeks out the party to beg them for their help. She had heard of their previous exploits. Her husband, Broderick, a forester, did not return from a recent trip into the woods after the fog swept through his camp. Without her husband, she and her children are sure to suffer hardships. She has no reward to offer except her eternal gratitude firewood and some rations. Optional additional information. No one that has ever entered the fog returned, but she can feel in her heart of hearts that her beloved Broderick is still alive. If the party doesn't go, she will. She asks them to take her newborn daughter Sarah to the temple in the nearby village of Frogsworth, so she will be taken care of, should Eliand also not return. As the party enters the woods, let them perform some ability checks against their DC5, an easy check, to find signs of the people they are looking for. The party will come upon a lumber camp with a small hut. Outside the hut is a wooden bank into which a heart is carved with the names Eliand and Sarah inside of it. A backpack bearing the sign of the Society of Ancient Artifact is on the ground on the porch of the hut. It is filled with writing equipment and tools used for archaeometric work, like brushes, picks, and measurement tools. Using further ability checks against a DC-5 of easy, they can also find tracks leading towards the mountain. Looking in the direction they will need to follow, they can see a thick wall of fog obscuring their view between the trees. To follow the tracks and find Broderick and Brother Uthric of Tail, the party will have to enter the fog. The fog itself has no ill effect on the party, and they can enter unharmed. Yet something is not quite right. Have the party perform saves against a DC 8 to 12, moderate check, to see if some among their number are gripped by an ominous feeling. If they fail their check, they might become suspicious of their party members, see shades moving at the very edge of their field of vision, or feel watched. Select one party member that will hear strange pleading whispers urging them to come towards the pyramid. This party member will play a special role in the last encounter of this quest. On Crater's Edge and the Field of Spears The party eventually reaches the crest of the crater and can see the pyramid at the center of the large crater. The rest of it is covered in the same thick fog the group just had to walk through. 
The pyramid looks like it is made from shimmering glass. The tip of it is slightly curved and slants upward to the left. From here, it appears as if the structure is a single piece. There are no visible gaps, bricks, or anything else that could hint at what it is made of. The player, who heard the whispers before, hears them again, and with greater urgency. With ability checks against a DC-5, an easy check, the party will find further evidence of the people they are looking for on the crest. A piece of cloth bearing half of the crest of the Society of Ancient Artifacts leads them down a path back into the fog. Once the party reaches the halfway point between the edge of the crater and the pyramid, the fog is less thick. Before them stretch rows and rows of skeletal warriors in a circle around the pyramid, facing away from the structure. Each skeleton is impaled by a spear glowing with the same green color of the pyramid. The spears are impaling each skeleton from the front, held by the impaled skeleton. An ability check against the DC 8 to 12 in moderate difficulty to investigate the skeletons will reveal that the outer rings of skeletons must be fresher, as some of them have still mummified tissue or even clothes and pieces of gear on them. The skeletons on the outside of the rings are from a variety of races, but the inner circles are of draconic or lizard origin. A single path leads directly towards the pyramid through this gruesome, unmoving and utterly silent display. On this path, the party will see a woodcutter's axe lying on the ground, along with a broken pair of glasses of good quality. Does the party dare wander through the army of still standing dead, or will they retreat? Option 1. The party turns back. If the party attempts to turn back, some of the skeletons will pull out their spears and attack the party. The party must either flee or be overwhelmed by the skeletons who will then bring them to the pyramid. You can find information on the skeletons for combat in the next section. There is an unending supply of skeletons, so the party will have to flee or be overwhelmed. If they escape, nobody will remember the party having gone into the fog, nor having met them before. This includes the party, as soon as they step out of the fog. The NPCs from the hook options will present their requests as if they are doing it and meeting the party for the first time. Option 2. The party follows the path. They walk past hundreds of rows of skeletons and eventually reach the foot of the pyramid. None of the skeletons stir and the party remains unmolested. The player that previously heard the pleading whisper will hear it now with a greater sense of urgency and exaltation. Something cannot wait for them to reach the pyramid. The Pyramid and Final Confrontation The pyramid itself is entirely smooth and as if made of green glass. Around it stand mostly broken and ragged tents, with faded banners showing a roaring green dragon on a field of silver and red. This had clearly been a military camp some centuries ago. Standing at the foot of the pyramid, they can spot two figures leaning towards green glowing spears as they hold the tips toward their own hearts. As the party approaches, they will hear them muttering to themselves in a language none of them understands. The two people look exhausted but unharmed and fit the description of who they were sent to find. They do not react to being spoken to or touched, nor can they be moved by any means, magic or otherwise. Once the player, who had heard the whispers, steps close enough or attempts to interact with the two people, both look directly at him and their murmurs become the same. The player who had heard the whispers and only that player hears Finally, a worthy vessel, step forward and receive my gift. A green glowing spear detaches from the surface of the pyramid. The whole left simply shimmers and appears closed again. It centers its spear tip on the heart of the player hearing the whispers and begins to approach. At the same time, several skeletons engage the party, all carrying spears. Combat commences. Combat, the mysterious spear. The spear cannot be stopped or slowed, it flies, and will only attack the player that had heard the whispers. The spear will always move one tile or hex more than the player it pursues, so it might eventually catch up to that player. If the spear kills the player it is pursuing, the player will take the spear and attack the party, gaining the health left to the spear as temporary hit points. 
Once those hit points are decreased to zero or below, the spear and all remaining skeletons are destroyed. The affected player will return to life with one health point. Once the spear is destroyed, all remaining skeletons are destroyed and the battle is won. You might need to adjust the following values depending on your TTRPG system, the level and size of the party. Health. Give it plenty so it has a chance to reach and damage the player it pursues. A hundred or more should suffice. Attack and damage. It attempts to pierce the heart of its quarry, hitting with a high hit chance, plus seven or higher, but dealing only moderate damage, 2d8 plus two, for example. Defense. It is fairly easy to hit, as it is focused on pursuit and not attempting to evade, with a DC 8 to 10, easy to moderate. The skeletons. One skeleton will always try to hold down the player the spear is chasing to give advantage to the spear. If this skeleton is destroyed, another one will take over the task. All other skeletons will attempt to kill the other players, concentrating on those that are attacking the spear. The number of skeletons in battle depends on the health of the mysterious spear. There will always be skeletons in combat until the spear is destroyed. If a skeleton is destroyed, a new one joins to take its place. Spear health above two-thirds, so between 66 and 100, means a number of skeletons equal to the size of the party plus three. Six skeletons if there are three adventurers in the party. Spear health above one-third, so between 33 and 66, means a number of skeletons equal to the size of the party plus one or two, depending on how difficult the encounter was so far. Spear health above zero, so between one and 33, means number of skeletons equal to the size of the party minus two. At least one skeleton will always activate. You might need to adjust the following values depending on your TTRPG system, the level and size of the party. Health. The skeletons are simple enemies, their danger is in their unending numbers. Give each fairly low health of about 10% of the spear's health. Attack and damage. Each skeleton wields a spear dealing piercing damage, hitting with a moderate hit chance plus 3 or lower and dealing low damage 1d8 plus 1 or low. Defense. The skeletons are easily hit with a DC of 8 to 10, easy to moderate. Possible outcomes of the battle. Defeat. The party is overwhelmed and killed. If the party is destroyed, the player that is taken over by the spirit of the pyramid inhabiting the spear will become the new embodiment of the evil that the party has unleashed and will resume its campaign of destruction and domination that had been stopped many centuries ago. See options 1 and 2 in the rewards and possibilities for some ideas. Victory. The mysterious spear is shattered. When the spear is destroyed, the party wins the fight. The two people from Hook 1 and 2 are freed from their trance-like state, but do not remember anything except being surprised by the fog. The forester wishes to return to his wife immediately and thanks the party profusely. The society member wishes to examine the place further and asks the party to send word to his group to come join him, now that the threat seems to have been banished. Rewards and Possibilities If the player that had heard the whispers was taken over by the ancient evil for a time, they will remember the insatiable lust for revenge against a general Trollic spokesphere who led the army to defeat the evil. They did not succeed and only managed to seal the creature in its prison, made from its own worst impulse and drive. Envy. The evil was constantly aware and could still wield its powers. It created the fog to wipe everyone's memories and lured the soldiers and mages close, looking for a fresh vessel to inhabit. Over time, the power of the fog waned and it was only capable of animating some of the skeletons to try and find new vessels none of which was strong enough to hold all the power contained in the pyramid. If your players survived, give them rewards as you see fit. These could be magic items found in the old war camp, valuables and of course experience points or even an entire level up. If the player that was pursued by the spear did end up being possessed, they will now know a new language that they did not know before as an extra reward. 
The society will make good on their promise to pay, even if the party did not start their quest by encountering them first. Where to go next from here is entirely up to you. The quest could be done and not have any further bearing on your ongoing campaign, or you could take one of the following two options to expand on the story if you so desire, or your party wishes to learn more. If your party was destroyed, finding the ancient evil and defeating it could be fun as well. In that case, bring all the characters that died in as champions and mini-bosses for the ancient evil. Option 1. General Spokesphere The party might discover, through speaking to the Society of the Ancient Artifacts, for example, that the instigator of this ancient war was someone or something called Spoked Sphere, according to what they were able to translate so far. They were apparently looking for a way to become immortal and caused untold suffering and destruction. Their fate is unknown. It could be that the general was ultimately successful, got away and now rules a nearby kingdom with an iron fist, a new evil to be defeated. Option 2. The Necromancer's Gambit Once the party has departed and engaged in further travel and adventure, they might receive a note from one of the characters they encountered in this quest, stating that it is of the utmost urgency for them to return as something horrible has happened. The party could return and learn that a necromancer had chanced upon the skeletal army in the crater and managed to animate them under their command. They are now roaming the countryside, attacking towns and villages and growing in strength. They clearly must be stopped. Closing words and credits. I hope you enjoyed this quest and got a good session or two out of it. The entire quest was built on the prompt given by the watercolor painting included in this PDF by the very talented Teresa Della. Socials and links below, give them a follow, likes and maybe commissions. This quest is part of my first attempts at creating a standalone quest module for any TTRPG system. If you have any feedback or your own artwork you'd like me to try and create a similar standalone quest around, get in touch via Mastodon, all links and info below. All works within this PDF are copyrighted by the respective creators and not eligible for commercial use. If you share any of the works under the same terms, you must give credit.